Archeon the Ever Chosen, the Three Eyed King, Herald of the Apocalypse, Supreme Champion of the Four Chaos Gods, and Lord of the End Times. He is the world's end made manifest, and he rides atop a horrific demonic steed of flames and war. No man, no god, no creature can challenge me and live! He is the Chosen of the Chaos Gods, and is protected and blessed with dreadful artifacts of ancient evil, each one bestowed as a reward for accomplishing the impossible trials that the gods demanded of him. Archeon managed to claim the legendary Six Treasures of Chaos, which marked him as the Ever Chosen. Now he marches to bring the world to its knees. Now the time has come to reap what has been sown. The true test awaits. If you want to be the one to bring the apocalypse to the world, Make sure to get your own copy of Total War Warhammer 3 through Instant Gaming. In Instant Gaming, you can get Total War Warhammer 3 or any game at a convenient discount. Getting them is super easy. You buy your game of choice, they give you a code for you to redeem it, and then you just download it and start playing. Check the link in the description and support the channel by getting your next game at Instant Gaming by visiting instantgaming.com and use our code to get a chance to win a free game. Ah, the ground shook over and over with the thundering sound of hundreds of thousands of warriors on the march. True warriors of chaos. Up in the skies, fire burned the heavens, and damnation fell upon the enemy that foolishly stood in our way. <laughs> on the head of this mighty army was him. The one who makes the very skies quake with fear. Archaon. Cannonballs flew through the air, slaughtering many of us with cowardly tactics. But unrelenting was our horde. Steel, steel, gunpowder, all of those opposed us and the very culmination of those things rammed into our lines. A steam tank pushed his way past the front line, using its mighty weight and girth. But it was met by chanting, Archaeon, Archaeon. The Lord of War had stopped the metal beast tackling the steel monster to the ground with otherworldly strength and power, slaughtering all of those inside. The chanting got louder and louder. Their blood we spilled all across the battlefield. Some heroes battle on too stubborn to realize all hope is lost. Their time is past, and the new age of chaos and dismay beckons. Archeon truly is a warrior who did the unthinkable and succeeded where thousands of other champions of chaos had failed. Wielding a huge flaming sword named Slayer of Kings, the Ever Chosen of Chaos rides atop Dorgar, his own massive demonic horse that breathes fire and is larger than any other warhorse in existence. He is the martial perfection of Slanesh, the sturdiness of Nurgle, 
the rage of Kohon, the spellcrafting of Zeech. The very gods themselves compete for his favor, his adoration, his soul. But he denies them these things. He negates them the pleasure, as the ever-chosen is truly undivided. And although he recognizes the Chaos Gods as the true forces that rule the cosmos, he will not devote himself to any single Chaos God. Archeon is the thirteenth and last ever chosen of Chaos. Of all the beings that have been able to become the ever chosen of Chaos, of all who have assailed the world over the ages, Archeon is by far the most ruthless and perhaps the most powerful of them all. I will prove once more that I am the ever chosen, for I am the anointed. The bringer of woes, the one true Lord of Chaos! The Ever Chosen is the destruction of the world made flesh. But to understand such a being, we must go back to the very start of his journey. Before there was Archeon, the Three-Eyed King, before he took, by right of might, the six legendary treasures of Chaos and was coronated as the Ever-Chosen, there was Diederik Kastner. Diederik was born in Nordland shortly after the First Great War against Chaos. He was the offspring of a Norskin raider attacking his mother during those tumultuous times. He had blood both from the North and from the South as was foretold in ancient prophecies. As the years passed, he became a member of the Order of the Twin-Tailed Orb, and he was mentored by a priest named Dagobert. Diederik was a fully devoted servant of the Order, and with dedication and commitment, he later became a Knight Templar, fighting faithfully in the service of the god-king Sigmar Heldenhammer. But he was eventually cursed by knowledge. He learned the truth about his fate and heritage, and his mind and heart were suddenly conflicted, as his foundations and his faith were suddenly shaken to the core. Traveling many miles looking for an answer, he arrived upon the massive holy temple of Sigma in Altdorf. Then and there, the confused and troubled Knight Templar knelt before the golden statue of Sigma and begged for a sign for a relief from the darkness that now consumed his mind. Desperately, he begged Sigma for an answer, but none came. The golden statue of the God King was lifeless. No sign was given to Diederik, and the man stood there, in silence, embracing his doom. He knew it was hopeless to keep looking for answers, and he renounced his service to Sigma and his beliefs in the gods of the South. But still he hated the dark gods of his father. Thus the half norskin resentful of the cruel fate the Chaos Gods had reserved for him, stood ready to fulfill his destiny. His quest was a mighty one indeed, and the road ahead was, perhaps, the most dangerous a man has ever threaded. But he would not falter. The very gods themselves watched as Diederik Kastner, the Templar of Sigma, died and a new person, yet to be forged, took his place. Forged from the other world, six treasures shall he possess. Upon his head the crown shall see all, and open eyes will prove woe to mortal kind. Then shall he ride unto the world. Then will the world know that the last war has begun. For over a century did he travel across the world with his loyal steed. 
Archeon knew that to become the Ever-Chosen and seal his destiny, he needed to begin by getting the legendary Mark of Chaos, an extremely powerful rune that dreadfully granted power on the behest of all the four Chaos Gods. It combined all of the perks and blessings of the individual Marks of Chaos all into one artifact. His prize was in Nagaroth, and to that cold place he took a warband of hardened warriors with him. The Swords of Chaos, these men were called. There Archeon made his way into the Altar of Ultimate Darkness, with the intention of offering himself to the Chaos Gods. He battled his way through a citadel so dark that no light could be counted on to mark the way. Indeed, when one of his warriors attempted to light a torch, it was snuffed out immediately, consumed by the pure blackness of that unnatural place. But Archeon was not afraid, and marched on further into the pit's black. He entered the all-encompassing abyss, and there he fought multiple creatures, unknown beings, impossible monsters, all of them. He lost his loyal steed against the multiple claws and tentacles that grasped and slashed. Fighting for hours until blissfully blind, Archeon slaughtered them all in return, and offered their hearts to the gods of chaos. Thus, re-establishing that ancient place of evil worship, he walked out of the altar, soaked in blood, with a mighty mark of chaos burning on his forehead. Next on his list of conquests was the most powerful set of armor ever beget by the Chaos Gods, the Armor of Morkar. The protective set worn by the very first ever chosen. Onto unknowable depths of the ocean he and his warband set sail, on a stolen ship of black metal pulled by a mighty sea drake. They reached a mysterious land found in no document of cartography, where half-human creatures dwelt. Their skin was as pale as snow, and they fought against Archeon and the invaders. Six days, six bloody days of fighting was all it took to destroy the local half-humans and their city, which was reduced to rubble. Deep within their necropolis, Archeon found the tomb of Morkar. There he fought the vengeful spirit of the fallen champion, who reanimated his old set of armor. The jewel was long and mighty, but the spirit of Morkar lost, and the set of armor was bestowed upon the winner. Nigh invulnerable, he set out to conquer his next prize, the Eye of Syrian which granted prophetic powers and almost complete awareness of the near future to its user. The mighty artifact was part of the massive treasure hoard of a chaos dragon named Flamefang, who guarded it beyond all other things. The weak serve and the strong take, such is the law of this world, and Archeon is the strongest there ever was. With his mighty axe he laid claim to the Eye of Shirian, the dragon and the man battled hard at the base of the Cliff of Beasts. The first true test of the recently acquired armor of Morkar came when a dragon completely swallowed Archeon. It was the armor that prevented him from being consumed by the dragon's terrible acidic juices and allowed the challenger to hack apart Flamefang and open him from the inside. Full of blood and the dragon's guts, Archeon claimed his prize by hanging the artifact around his neck. Archeon is the apocalypse made manifest. But the apocalypse does not walk, it does not run, he rides. And for that he would claim Dorgar, the Steed of Doom, a demonic being so foul it was used as a set piece in the collection of bizarre creatures of the demon prince Agramon. Fighting his way against the demons and creatures guarding Agramon's palace, Archeon was able to get into that mysterious place. There he saw the nigh-maddening beings that should not exist according to the laws of this or any world. Beasts that were part man, part insect, and part mammoth. 
shapeless beings that came back and forth from this world and the next. There were no benevolent gods or forces in that place, for if they existed, they would surely not allow some of these monsters to be. Eventually, after looking past innumerable creatures of all forms, Archeon found Dorgar through his stench of sulfur. The steed burst into flames and changed into weird shapes as Archeon vaulted on his back. But the Chaos Warrior was able to break its will like a wild stallion and escape that terrible place. He will see why I am the Lord of the End Times. Why I am the Ever Chosen. And why I will wield the Slayer of Kings. After that, Archeon sought the weapon to end all weapons. The Slayer of Kings. The blade used by Vangel, the second ever chosen of Chaos. It was hidden on top of the Chimera Plateau, where the creatures of its namesake gathered in great hordes. Archeon, along with three of his loyal companions, climbed and battled against the Chimeras, until reaching the top of the world. From there, Archeon could see the vast land below and made the oath to one day rule it all. As they hiked, the mountains itself rolled over, for it was alive. It turned out that the father of all dragon ogres, Krakenrock the Black, was the mountain. Not even the mighty Chaos Champion could fell such a foe. So he and his party walked silently, only to find that the sword was clasped into the huge beast's chest. Prince Ograx the Grand, the strongest companion of the Chaos Warriors, lifted one of the talons of the beast just long enough for Archeon to retrieve the mighty sword. But something unexpected happened in that moment. The greater demon Uzul was bound to the Slayer of Kings, and the blade began to make the loudest of shrieks as Krakenrock began to stir. Archeon saw no other option but to plunge the sword upon Ograx's heart, to quench the greater demon's thirst with royal blood. The shrieking stopped, and the party moved on, leaving the prince's dead body where it fell, his sacrifice well worth it. Decades passed after obtaining the Slayer of Kings and the other mighty artifacts, but to truly be complete, he still missed one. The Crown of Domination, a helm that originally bore the Eye of Shirian, but was now lost. He had no clue where the crown was, but the shadowy demon prince Belakor showed him the location, intending to steal it after the Chaos Champion failed his quest. The Great Helm was hidden on top of a great icy peak in the World's Edge Mountains, upon where the very first Chaos Warship had taken place. For a day and a half, he climbed the snowy peaks, and with the help of his demonic steed, he managed it, heavy armor and all. Suddenly, the potential ever chosen was in front of the mighty gates of the first Chaos Shrine to ever exist upon which each Chaos God would test his mettle to see if he was truly worthy of being the Ever Chosen. The labyrinth started with pus and pox, as Nurgle sought to fell the great champion, but by willpower alone he fought off the greatest diseases and afflictions. Then the maze turned into crystalline mirrors, each showing a different reality to him, and the sight almost drove him insane, but such a mighty warrior could not be confused by these visions. He blindfolded himself and carried on with sound, smell and touch guiding him. He carried on by instinct and managed to get through the test imposed by Zeech. After that, his senses were all struck at once by the greatest sensations ever felt by any mortal, for now Slanesh 
the Dark Prince of Excess would try to corrupt him. The greatest of rewards, the mightiest of pleasures, it was all worthless to him. And Archeon marched on, not allowing himself to be distracted by the thousands of temptations. It was then that he arrived in a great arena. It seemed that the sun itself had come down to meet him in combat, for the great glare burned away his skin and hairs. In reality, it was a mighty bloodthirster of Kor. The two fought with all their might. They traded blows that would split a mountain in twain. But eventually, the Chaos Warrior tackled the demon to the ground and strangled him with his own barbed whip. What he stood in front of him was the simplest of shrines, with a throne behind it, upon which sat a skeleton with the crown of domination on its skull. Archeon took the skull and raised it to the skies. He had done it. He had gathered all six artifacts of chaos. Belakor, eternal enemy of the gods, was forced to perform the coronation upon the new ever chosen of chaos, as he had done time and time again. But this time it was different, as it would be the last. Archeon had completed his mighty quest and was crowned by the gods as the Lord of the End Times. The last remnant of his own humanity died. Diedrich Kastner was no more. Archeon was then unleashed upon the world and he proceeded to gather the mightiest and darkest army ever seen. As sure as the sun is to rise every morning, as sure as chaos is to corrupt the hearts of men. So soon the hour of fate comes around, the ever-chosen stirs from his dark throne and prepares the blow that shall split the world asunder. Realms of old have fallen, lost beneath the fury of the Northlands, or smothered by vermin from below. Doom preachers and madmen now shout on the street alike, all rambling about the fate of the world. This is indeed nothing new in the city of Altdorf, but something seems to be odd this time. There are now more of them. In every corner of every street, one can hear the ramblings of a flagellant preacher all saying the same thing. The end is nigh. Does our most holy father reward those who take the easy road? Does he traffic in temptation? Of course not! Sigma rewards hard work, resolve in the face of temptation, and, above all, courage when confronting mortal danger. My friends, the easy path leads to corruption, to damnation, to perdition. Only through suffering can you ever see the glory that is the truth that is the founder of our glorious empire, that is our divine father, Sigma! The more aggressive ones get carried off by the city guards, only to be substituted as soon as they are gone. And week after week this has been going on. The taverns and bars and inns grow quieter, and even the most enthusiastic of drunken folk is shut by the tension in the air. The times are bleak in the empire and the air is choked with hopelessness and dread. For many moons have the people noticed the vanishing of cattle, or the birth of the animals as mutated monsters. Just today, we learned of a damned being that was born in the middle of the night. He had no tongue, yet he could scream. He had no eyes, yet he could cry. The poor bastard was put out of his misery with fire until nothing was left but a smoking black pulp. A man in Nuln has reportedly awoken this morning to find a pale and fleshy hand growing out of his own chest. And all around the lands of the Empire, entire households are being burned at the stakes for making covenants with the Dark Gods in these desperate times. The people are afraid to walk beneath the canopy of the forests. 
that divide many of the settlements of our lands, for the creatures that dwell there have grown even more violent and bold recently. It is a matter of fact now. The armies of Chaos are on the move, and the steppes of Kislev have already felt their fire and brimstone. The end comes! And he rides upon a steed of fire with two tails. A wave of darkness rides in his wake. The Dark Templar comes to slaughter our gods. Beware! The end comes for all of us. Rumors are that the hated Kurgans have come down from their freezing wastes in the north to make battle with the Kislevites. The more skeptical amongst the populace are quick to shut this down, saying that the barbarians were busy fighting each other to meaningfully unify. But this is indeed the truth. Their numbers are larger than ever, and I know that more and more dire reports are coming from the north. I can only wonder what these messages really say. The nights grow colder, and the days grow brief. Doors are locked and barred, windows are closed, not to be opened again, and nailed shut. There was one name in the lips of those who still rambled, Archeon, but they did not last, for the witch hunters burned many a would-be a preacher upon pyres of holy fire. But these actions have not stopped the fear we all have in our hearts, the dread that has settled over not only the Empire, but the entire world. And they were indeed right to fear, for he comes atop a steed of doom and flame. From the far north he comes, Archeon, the Ever-Chosen. When we learned of the Chaos Host approaching, we lit our network of torches at the top of our mountains, and we mustered whatever forces we could. We managed to get a few patrol groups, and we drew a few hundred from the city itself. But we didn't know the enemy would come in such terrible numbers, and that unnatural creatures from the warp would come with them. The enemy had monsters of impossible size, that marched close to them, driven by an otherworldly hunger and desire to kill. Their Chaos Knights charged against our ranks with sheer ferocity. We tried to contain them as hard as we could, but it seemed like a vain effort, and I saw many good men die in the attempt. We charged them many times, with our powerful cavalry. But it was not enough. Not enough to stop their advance. They even had greater demons by their side. They obeyed the will of the other chosen, and they killed relentlessly. Eventually, we were pushed back into the cold waters of the river, and they stained it with our blood. We fought for our lands, and for our own lives. We fought with the running water up to our chests, and still they pushed on. Our supporting lines of fire were crushed to bits by their massive cannons from hell. They blasted us apart with their balls of the eldritch fury, and the impacts disintegrated flesh, bone, and armor. A few of us could barely escape from that deadly host of chaos. But only thanks to the selfless sacrifice of many of our brothers, the 
died on that battlefield and in that damned river. Buying this precious time for us to escape at the last moment when we knew all was lost. The snowy plains were tainted with Kislevite blood. The river ran red on that day. Entire civilizations have fallen at the hands of Archeon. The Herald of the Apocalypse is now coming to bring the end times to the world and reduce it all to ashes and rubble. Who is there to stop him? Who are we to deny the cruel destiny that awaits us? How is the world supposed to be saved against he who is chosen by the gods? On this channel, we are putting together narrative Total War cinematic battles and Warhammer lore videos. A special thank you goes to our Patreon supporters who help us in the making of more content. You can also join Patreon and earn extra perks while supporting the videos to come. Find the link in the description below. Make sure to subscribe, and thank you for watching. See you on the next one.